live from the KBJR studio, this is Friday Night Lights with Alexis Bass and Alexis Beckett, only on Northern News Now. Hello and welcome to week four. That also happens to be the halfway point of the prep high school football season of Friday Night Lights, your home for all of the high school football action for around here in the Northland. I'm Alexis Bass. And I'm Alexis Beckett. Thanks for joining us. You're in just the right place because Team Alexis will take you all the way up the shore and, of course, across the bridge. So with that being said, Bass, where do we begin tonight? Well, I'll let you know where we get things moving and grooving right across town with the Crosstown Clash between one team who has surprised a lot of people, not dropping a game yet this season, another team who fell on their homecoming last week by just one point. It's East and Denfeld. He's back, Dashaun Moore, happy to play in his first game. And speaking of happy, yes, let sir. me hold your heart real quick. How precious is that? First Denfeld play of the game about 15 minutes before kickoff. We had a lot of rain and a product Ooh. of the rain wet balls. Greyhounds jump on the loose ball to take over possession. But the Hunters defense holds in, folks. There you are three things guaranteed in life. Death taxes and Tay Man's breaking Tay tackles Man. and scoring on a 70 plus yard run with the three headed monster back. It's an embarrassment of riches for Denfeld. Mans gets us going with this 80 yard touchdown. Denfeld leads 7 0 after a Daquan Moore touchdown. Hunters upset 14 0 and threatening Mans gets stuff but Ooh, tries to make something happen, but the ball is free. Greyhounds jump on it and take over possession. And in his first game back, Deshaun Moore backpedals in for six. Hunters Awful. lead 21 0 going into the half. And the Hunters, well, they're 4-0, baby, with a 27-14 win. win. Really making noise around here. You just love to see it, Becky. Absolutely. And it is at that time again, ladies and gents, our game of the night. We've got a Section 7-3A championship rematch between Esco and Pequot Lakes, both sitting at 3-0, which means someone has to end their streak tonight. But I don't know. When one of your linemen plays the national anthem on his electric guitar, you can't not fall. win, oh, right? Snap. Well, Brock Montnamy gave Esco the energy they needed five minutes left in the first. Esco lined up at the one, and the QB push gets the He's job in. done. JC and Owens in the end zone for the first point of the night. And you already know we weren't having an Esco highlight without this one. Two <laughs> minutes left in the first with an Esco go, go. down. Hand off the Koi, the boy Parrish, who cuts the, into the hole to find the gap. A little gallop into the end zone. Esco will go up 14-0. So now the Patriots will try to get on the board on the next drive play. Erickson goes to the pass. But Isaac searches and is 6 2 South get up Later. for the interception. He'll take this one to the crib for a pick six. And the defense keeps up the pressure. Esco still up 22 0 in the second quarter. It's Parrish on the sack. The ball is loose. And D lineman Riley Raymond recovers it in the end zone for another Esco TD. And Esco will come out on top of this one 41 0, moving to 4 0 on the season. Another 4 0 team. Well, up next, Grand Rapids, who is in town to face the other Hawks. Both teams are coming in with two wins and one loss. First quarter after Hermantown 38-yard field goal, Thunderhawks get offensive, Ooh. and it's Jamlin Forlek from 22 yards out to take the lead. But on to the second quarter, and it's H-Town with a little screen pass action running through the rain. Not a problem when it's River Freeman running the race, making moves, showing speed. He hydroplanes all the way down inside the five. To cap off the drive, it's quarterback Alex Schott stretching over the goal line to give the that. Hermantown Hawks the lead. It's 7-3 now, but then this. Grand Rapids elects to take it to the air. Devin Crinkle lobs it up after a tip drill. It ends up in the hands of junior defenseman. Defensive back Hale Smith, who gets the big INT. But before the half, it's time for the touch pass shot to Peyton, future Bulldog Menzel, who cannot be stopped. You know, Kurt Weezy is smiling at home as he sees this one in the talk. Hawks take a 10 point lead and end up with the Waterlogs W over to Th Thunderhawks 31 to 14. Now we go up the shore for two harbors. Agates hosting Proctor Rails. First quarter, the home team already up 7-0 and in the business of only going up from there, Tate Nelson from Jacob Carpenter coming right into hey. your living room. And don't forget about Nelson because this isn't the first time you'd hear about him. Agates go up 13 zip. Now they're hype and they have every reason to be. Same quarter and same man. Nelson just hauling on through on a mission. Catch me if you can. And the mission was accomplished. Another TD for number 10. Agates extend their lead 21 0. And at this point, it's just the Tate Nelson show, guys. We're only in the first quarter at that still. But when you have it, you have it. You 27 do. zip. Rails remain quiet as the Agates end up taking this one 47 8 over Proctor. And in a foggy Proctor, the Jacks hosting Rockridge. Quoke coming off a big win last week. Her. And keeping that momentum, James Wilmot lofting this one up to Cooper Lena. Goodbye. Gets oh up 
and then this one. one to set this up. Wilmot rolling out to pass and just says, I'll take this one myself, tucks it in and runs it in for six. Jackson Crease, their lead 16-0 after the successful two-point conversion. Wolverines out with possession, trying to make something happen on fourth down. James Tommen has a man in the seams, but the ball is a little bit underthrown. Blair Charter with the coverage. Jacks take over on downs. And just before the half, why not another Wilmot touchdown? Same result, different side of the field. The pass turns into a... I'll just do it myself. Jacks take a 22-0 lead into the break. And Cloquet, they get back to 500 with a 38-12 win. And over to the nine-man ranks we go. It was senior night for Cherry Tigers as they took on Cook County. And there's no better way to celebrate the seniors than like this. Quarterback Noah Sunquist heaves it downfield to the big senior Andrew Staples. A 55-yard study strike gives the Tigers an early 8-0 lead. And Sunquist wasn't done clinging the rock. This time on the play action, he chucks it deep to Isaiah Osama, who is somewhere behind that ref, taking it into the end zone, extends the Tigers' lead to 16. But Sunquist was also making plays on defense. Cook County's Rohan Rude fumbles the ball, and the Tigers' QB is there for the it. scoop. Then on the very next play, it's time for some ground and pound. This time it's Noah Osawa who makes defenders miss and he won't be touched. To the house he goes, a 66 yard touchdown sprint as the Tigers oh, send their damn. seniors off with a massive win over the Vikings, 82 6. And staying in the nine man, Mountain Iron Buell with yet another blowout, 72 0, just three weeks until the much anticipated MIB Cherry game. And then on the range, Moose Lake hands Nasabi East their first loss of the season, 34 to 16. Meanwhile, I Falls picked up win number three against GNK K hey, in a close one, 29-25. And then back in nine man, hey, don't forget about Little Fork Big Falls, who is 4-0-2 after a big 68-6 win. Holy cow, we got some spicy rivalries and oh, matchups tonight. Another Friday full of fun and another Friday night that isn't over. Just quite yet. The night is young. Yeah, I'm not ready for <laughs> it to be over. When we come back, we ha we head into the WIAA to see what our Wisconsinites were up to tonight, checking in on Bass's favorite plays. Woo! Plus, the best part of the night is still to come. If you know, you know. That's all next. <laughs>